Hey, Cardassians, this is a new feature we have for you. A new feature. We're trying something. We're trying something new for the Keeping Up with the Cardassians, because if we're going to keep up with you, we need to give you some more exclusive content, and we're going to give you some YouTube content. And I, th I think since we're not doing a Star Trek series on the show, it's a way to get more Star Trek content out, out there. there. I know, because I'm missing some of the Star Trek content. Our, our episode that's going to go up on Monday, you'll notice there's going to be a lot more Star Trek content in there. In fact, the whole first half of the show is basically Star Trek content. Yeah, pretty much. It was um, nice to talk Trek again. Yeah, yeah. but uh, we've been away We've been away for a little bit because we're doing Battlestar Galactica, but we want to give you some exclusive content for, uh, Card uh, for YouTube. So today we're going to talk Star Trek Picard with you. By the way, I'm Nick. This is Rob. Joe. Yeah. So we're going to talk with you some Star Trek Picard, and uh, we realize we're getting to you after three episodes. But better you know late than never. It's better late than never. So, um, you Speak know, for yourself, three we've, episodes. Well, you still, <laughs> Joe has not watched any of them, so Joe is going to hesitate to do anything with his hands for this whole episode. He's not going to know what to hand do. Check. He's the gonna hand time. check. Hand Joe's check. Hand check. Joe's going to ask questions. Um, so we're back to yeah. we're back in Picard. We're season three of Picard. Season one and two. If I had to rate them, I'd give season one a five. Season two, I'd maybe give a five and a half. Season three so far, I think it's solidly in the eight and a half to nine range. Yeah, it's uh, been surprisingly good. And, yeah, you've you've both raved about the the three episodes so far. You've officially contributed. Thank Look at you. you. You did a good job. I'm I so proud of you. Yeah, I, I mean, listen. I'm a good listener. Yeah, it's been really good so far, and I think the thing that I've enjoyed most about this new Picard is it even feels like older Trek. It feel it fits the tone of Strange New World. So that well, well the, the, go ahead. So, well, that was as somebody who hasn't watched the show and yeah. didn't watch Next Generation. That yeah. was one of the questions I had: is how close does this feel to the them bringing the Next Generation back thirty? Plus years well, after. Well, the nice thing about it is, is so part of a lot of my issue with a show like Discovery is they take a lot of leaps. You're just supposed to go along with this and, and assume it happens rather than plotting it out in the in the episode. Mm -hmm. This is very much plotting it out in the episodes. Right. This is taking its time to tell a story rather than just okay, now you're here. Exactly. Okay. You're seeing where yeah, they're you're, they're showing the progress from point A to point B instead of assuming you know why they're at point B without so are showing there point A. So, uh, writers, are there any of the same writers working on this show that worked on the next generation? Oh my gosh. No, not on the next generation. itself. So you no. have a different, you have a, a completely different vantage point, uh, like writing styles, uh, storytelling, yes. but using these characters. Correct. Well, and I think now we're getting people who grew up watching the next generation, um, who are, uh, writing for it. I think a lot of the issue with some of the other shows is they viewed Star Trek as dull, for lack of a better word, and they wanted to Star Wars it up. They took that J.J. Abrams influence yeah. and mm -hmm. ran with it. Yeah. And they are doing a lot of that with season three. There's a lot more action in the first three episodes of Star Trek Picard than there was in all of the next generation twice. Probably, yeah, absolutely. Uh, which, it, you, know, it, you know, here's an interesting story beat that, that caught me. You know, because we've talked a lot about how Picard... Uh, Next Generation is all about negotiating over violence. Uh, Picard was a diplomat. Picard is a diplomat. Yes, yes, yes. In episode three, he's like, shoot him, kill him, shoot him, kill him. We and need to attack Will. We need to attack Will. Will attack. And, and Riker's like, bro, slow your roll. I think part of that's because it's the kid. He has the kid there, and he's freaking out about now he has a kid that he didn't know about. Yeah. Maybe. I and don't know. To kind of go back to that, uh, on IGN, Terry Metalis and some of the cast was interviewed mm. and they asked him, they asked Terry Metalis, who's the showrunner for this. Okay. Do you view this as Star Trek season eight? And he said, no, it's a, it's different stories. They were more episodic than this is going to be more of a continuing story. And if this was, if I did this as a season eight of Star Trek, the next generation, it would be more thoughtful, which I kind of appreciated him actually saying that because it's not incredibly like methodical and cerebral, like the next generation. No, was. no, but, he acknowledged the fact, yeah, we're doing it differently because this is more of a continuation of where the show is now, like where TV is now, yeah. and more of a continuation because of the movies. Okay. So I actually appreciate him saying, okay, we're not incredibly thoughtful, but the, uh, to me, it's not as dumb. So that yeah, that was that was my yeah. that was my question was was like, are they writing this as a season eight? Because if, if in the the D, the Deep Space Nine. Uh, documentary we watched 
uh, what you leave behind. Yeah, they did. They did that. They workshopped the beginning of a season eight. Yes, and it was like, oh, I would, I would really like. I to would have see tuned that. into that. Yeah, and they work. They're working this as more of a of a long movie. Okay. So here's a cool thing about season three of Picard. Spoiler, 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 spoilers. If you haven't watched it yet, turn off now. Don't turn off. Like, subscribe, well, share. <laughs> well, you turn off now I and then come off. back. Come I'm back. whoring us out. Okay. Completely turned off after you like and subscribe. The enemies are changelings. Everybody's turned off after watching us. The enemies are changelings in season three. Um, they just dropped it, dude. They just dropped it that, like, the, the bad guys are the changelings. What? Yeah. And, and Worf actually has to co- reach out to Odo to get some information about it. So there was a... Group, Odo actually reached out to Worf. That's right. There was a group of chain, ch- changelings. How are, they, how are they doing this? Well, after Odo went back to the planet... Yeah, off screen. After Odo went to the planet, a bunch of changelings said, no, we want to continue destroying all the solids. So they left. They left the Great Link to continue their mission of killing everyone. Is this the biggest nod to DS9? So far, yes. yes. Absolutely. Since DS9? Even more so than Worf. Than the changeling fact, Worf is on the show, yeah, but he's not DS9 Worf. He's still kind of like right, but part I mean, of the Next Generation cast. Yeah, I think, I think most people would think Next Generation... W- when they think, when they see Worf, most people. You know what's so, interesting is Worf, Worf has been in the most Star Trek content too. Yeah, by far. So by Worf far, to do. Worf is like the most seen character. Which I read something the other day that when Worf was initially conceived in Next Generation, Ron Barry didn't have a full idea of what Worf would be like. So a lot of it was on Michael Dorn to develop the well, character. Originally, he didn't think about having even a Klingon on the bridge, and right. then someone suggested it to him to see how far they have come. Yeah, exactly. So. Anyways, with all that said, good for Worf, Worf is a good nod to DS9, in my opinion. Um, I had a dream the other night that they actually had to go to DS9 to get stuff, which was such a cool dream. Do you know like, how big of an erection I would get? Wouldn't that be cool <laughs> if they go to DS9 and Kira is commanding DS9? And they can have all new crew on there. That's or even fine. Orving the communication. I'll take a communication with DS9 in the background. Yeah. Oh, no. I would Something, love it. Anything. Like, I would, they have to go to DS9. I mean, the, the changeling thing is, is a big nod, though. That's oh, it's big, huge. Huge nod, but the mini noir was dropped, and so, yes, absolutely. Mm. I, Nick, I watched it before Nick did, and he, he was saying, "I'm going to watch it now." I go, there, "There, there's one definite wow moment." Okay, and that was the wow moment. Where I'm like, "Oh," because initially when they showed it, I didn't get that it was a changeling when he punched him. Yeah, initially I didn't get that. It was just, "Oh, this guy's phasing face," so it's kind of some kind of, I don't know yet. And I guess I didn't think of it because I'm used to that gold tint. Mm-hmm. But then when they said it's a change, I'm like, oh, sh-. well, because then later on in the episode, they're interrogating a guy and she uh, Rafi mistakes the guy is having withdrawal from drugs. But it's really because he's been in solid form for so long. Oh, you know, okay. like like the one episode with. Um, yeah, where he's crackling and w- in the elevator with. Um, gosh, L- Luxana Troy. Luxana Troy. Or when Derek's inter- interrogating him. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, the, you know, he needed to go into his uh, liquid, his changeling form. And then they shoot him and kill him, which was interesting. Yeah, I'm all right. Worf, it's but they, Klingon. Uh, they they dropped those hints in the first episode because they were talking about the phaser blaster on the ground, like the way it disintegrated the pattern. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and I remember hearing that, and I'm like, well, wait, hold on. I th- I immediately thought Changeling because they're like, one day it was the Cleons attacking us, the next day it was the Romulans, the next day it was the Federation. I'm like, oh, change. Like I thought right away. It was changelings. Oh, I'm Nick. I was ahead of the curve. Yeah. I, I didn't think that at all. And I just didn't know what to think at the time. Me either. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe, you didn't think that? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think the changelings are a good enemy. Nick is smart. I think it's a great... Well, first of all, we, we've been clamoring for something of DS9 to show yes, up. Yes, please. Yeah. Just anything. And this is anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, between Lower Decks and this, I mean, we've gotten some decent content. It's still... Some decent nods recently. We'll say decent. I still more, want, so, more so than previous... How hard would be Quark just to show up? Oh, I, oh, oh, did we talk about the Klingon makeup last, or the uh, Ferengi makeup? Last yeah, we did. Okay. We talked about the Ferengi makeup, and you hit me really hard, and that really hurt me. Uh-huh. So uh, another nugget I wanted to drop was in, in episode three, they also said something about they're in this nebula, and every once in a while, something happens where they can sense organic matter in it, and they're getting pulled deeper and deeper into the black hole of the nebula. My theory is that somehow it's going to be related to the um, the prophets somehow. You think really? Yes, because the changelings are involved, so the prophets are going to be involved. But the prophets work out of the one wormhole overall. I, they do, but they can go anywhere. But the prophets don't have organic ma- matter. 
Yeah, they do. And Cisco. If, if anything, it's the change they found out how to exist Cisco's in space. There. Cisco's there. He's organic. There is no way. No chance in hell. I would love Cisco it. Cisco. Could you imagine? Up. Just a Rene- just a cameo. Yeah. Odo, Odo has a better shot of actually showing up. A hundred percent. Unless they're gonna recast Cisco, there's no chance of Cisco showing up. I think there could be. I no. Yeah, no. I think there could be. You biggest would never know about that. Delusional. Knowing who Avery Brooks is, there's no way there'd be any sign that he would be in it. He would just appear. Yep. They would be shooting no. the scene nope. and he would just appear. Yeah. <laughs> be like, in full hey, costume uh, and makeup. What you guys up to? Uh, I'm going to drop in for that'd a couple the minutes. Biggest, they'd be like, that'd be the biggest surprise in Star Trek history, probably. And they'd be like, yes, oh, Mr. Absolutely. Brooks. Absolutely. Yes, Mr. Brooks, please. Yeah. We don't have a scene written for you. That's okay. I wrote my own. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Brooks. I, uh, no chance. Zero, zero, zero chance. I disagree. I seven three four four nine four zero nine eight zero. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> no, I'm saying there's no chance. No, there's no, a there, chance. Joe, what do you think? I I, I would be I would be shocked. Like beyond shocked. Well, prepare Have to be we shocked. Piqued your interest in Picard season or yeah, Picard Very season. Very much so. Very much so. Do you so. think you're gonna go balls deep? Now I am, I think. Yeah. You, you can. Go home. Go balls I don't deep. Think, I don't think you really I don't think there's anything he needs to know. No. Not, not that now. was my, that was one of the the okay. things holding me back was like okay, I know that I know it's it's a uh, Captain Picard, Admiral like, Picard, and <sighs> nerd. He's retired though. Nerd. Yeah, <laughs> you're on a you're on a Star Trek <laughs> podcast essentially. Uh, no, you can call kettle. him a nerd. You can yeah. call him a nerd. I'm yeah. a nerd. I'm okay with it. But yeah, that was I was like, uh, can I? Is there? I don't. I don't. I didn't watch Next Generation. Am I going to get anything? Yeah, you didn't There's watch the only backstory for Next Generation that might help you at all is on the show. There was very few hints, but hints that there might be a romantic interest between Picard and the Doctor Crusher. But it never. Okay. They never sealed the deal. No, while nothing the... ever sealed of it, and nothing really. I mean, there's like two or three episodes where the flirtation might be there. Mm. Yeah. But outside of that, nothing. Not ever. Um, yeah. and you know about. Wharf, and once you watch one in season one and two, you you, you don't remember, need to watch season one. And the two. one episode of the record you should watch. You don't need to watch it though. The one episode you should watch. You don't need to watch it. No, you'll love it because he cooks pizza for Picard. What? Yeah, he I'm does. In. He cooks pizza, but you don't need to watch it. You could just start well, season three. This is pizza. Yeah. pizza. Gosh, whatever. Pizza. Do whatever you guys want. <laughs> it's not even. No, I don't even care. See, exclusive content. This is what you get. More arguing. More us. More arguing. But you know what we need to learn to do, gentlemen. Look at the camera more now. Oh, we got to do that? No. We got to raise the camera up, too. No, we speak to you each other. You raised me up. I'll get I, just bought, I just bought Josh Groban's first album on vinyl. Cool. No one cares. And the cool thing about this is we're still running this <laughs> off the F-150 because I have no power. Oh, yeah. yeah we, should, yeah, we should wrap it up. We, uh, hey, we want to keep these videos shorter anyway. So, anyways, we'll be back next week with more exclusive content. What'd you rank this episode, Nick? A nine. You're, you said eight you earlier. You said eight on the show. I lied. No, I gave the series, a, no, the whole series I give a nine so far, overall. You said this, between like an eight and a half, nine. Yeah, so I'll give the episode an eight. I think you gave the episode an eight. I Do you have anything down about this episode? Anything where you're like, eh. I don't like the Riker and and Picard dynamic at the end where Riker kicks him off the, the bridge. 100% agree. Because uh, first of all, you're the captain, Riker, and you took his advice, so that's on you, bro. Yeah, and it was, felt a bit forced. Get off my bridge. I know they were working up to it, but it still felt forced. It felt forced. That's all we got. I agree. Thanks for joining us if you watch this. Bye, everyone. Here's the music. See you all. We love you all. Thanks for keeping up with us. Instagram. That's Twitter. Patreon for music videos and our Top Gun tribute. Yeah. Called Top Gun. There's a music video on Patreon called Toy Time. With Joe. You're going to want to check out. So be there. Peace, love, and applesauce. Bye, all. Fade out. Bye.